Right, what have I got to do? Boosh, it's a keychain light. And as you know, this channel, I love keychain lights. I've got loads of the damn things. I've got 45 or 50 of them now. The reason I like them is because they're a light that a lot of people can get and enjoy. You don't have to invest £300 on something that you have to carry around, you know, on a backpack with a tripod because it's so powerful. It's something that you can have on your keys and make use of. Because I keep using this saying, but sometimes the best flashlight is the one that you have with you i always have a one on my keychain mine happens to be not this specific one here this is the glow in the dark version but i have a night core tiki i've done loads of tests with loads of different ones i just found for me that was the best one one of the things i quite liked about it as well was the fact that it had that these it had these extra modes as well as the main mode to be honest over the years of carrying it i've not really used those extra modes i used the high cri light a few times when i was working on a pc but it got back in my eyes and it was less sort of interesting to me than i thought it would be so i personally didn't make use of those so i'm trying to move and tra just sort of transition more into a more traditional one where you just get your main beam and that's it because that's probably all i need for that bearing in mind i will carry an adc light as well and sometimes a thrower or whatever it is when i'm out and about <clears throat> excuse me so with that in mind um you, you know i carry that um the uh, one of the other models which you could get i mean this was 300 lumens on this you go for something like the night court tiny now it's wider but look it's similar sort of diameter it's got that extra bit on both usb rechargeable this was the original tiny which was really good i ended up getting one of these as a present for a close friend he had carried it for years um I, this sort of suffered, um, this sort of lost its coating and the buttons, which are plastic, they lost the coating here. So they became sort of see-through, but still worked for years. I ended up getting them one of the Tiny 2s. So then when I saw the titanium version came out, I thought, right, let's have a review of this because I don't, I don't have one. Um, so here is the titanium version. You can get the original version, which is like aluminum and plastic, and then you can get the SS version, which is stainless steel. Now is the titanium. I used to think these were a little bit overpriced possibly, um, but at, at the similar price they were, you can get them now in titanium, which is brilliant. Now this is all in Chinese, so what I'll do is I'll take it out of the box and I'll, I'll describe what, it, what this is. So let's put them out of the way. <clears throat> okay, so this is the Nightcore Tiny V2 or Tiny 2. Let's get everything out of the box here. And this is the titanium version. So titanium just is the alloy which it's made out of. Uh, I've put this all back in the box, but I have carried this for more than two weeks on this one. Um, here's the ring I used it when I had it in the key ring con configuration. And as you can see, I was very impressed with this. So look, there's the connector there. It's nice and wide. I can't see any damage on that, can you? And yet it's, this was really cheap. This was off something else. It took the paint off this suggesting that this is way harder than this cheap rubbish um, so i used that when it was on my keys i had it on its own in my pocket but it's done remarkably well look there's a slight tarnish to it very very slight but i'll wet my thumb and i'll do this watch it sort of comes off i don't know whether that's i have don't have any other titanium stuff so i don't know if that's normal but look that comes off beautiful surface um no big dings or scratches normally at this point after a couple of weeks Especially if it's a saw fern or something like that. Here's a saw fern. I'll be looking saying, well, look, the anodization's coming off the high points. And look, it's come off there. And see, see the silvered points where the anodization's coming off. Not the case with this because it doesn't have a coat in it. It's just the titanium, basically. But it looks beautiful and very light, but very strong. So I've been really impressed with the longevity of the coat. And, I mean, when I got this box, it looked like someone's dog had been eating this. But that's a, that's a separate matter altogether. So let's see what you get in the box here. So you get some something in Chinese. Uh, my Mandarin isn't that good these days. But they are, interestingly, look, you've got the uh, the tube, which is the lowest powered one, very old. Then they brought out the V2. The Tiki, which is what I was carrying, which is pre pretty decent. Then you've got the Tiki LE. Then you've got the Tiki GTO, which is glow in the dark. Then you've got the Tip SE. Tip. I, I, I tested it against nearly all of these lights, so don't worry, we will go over that. I put them side by side. Little warranty card or something and instructions, which I can't be able to read. You get one of these, it's not the best. It's okay. 
you've got a split link there which would go over there I don't normally trust these ones because the spring that's quite a weak spring so you may want to get your own keychain holder because sometimes when you've got that in the pocket and it pushes like that it'll release and um, so I didn't use the one that they included it's not the best it's okay you know but you, you're better for something like this where it isn't going to come off get yourself a nice titanium one or something okay so Nightcore Tiny 2 and this is the TI so this comes with a a rating of an IP54, so it's not IPX6, IP7 or 8 or anything like that. It's not waterproof, it's water resistant, okay? So you can't be dunking this in water and leaving it. But you could use the argument, well, this is a keychain light, therefore I should probably not be jumping off waterfalls a bit like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator. Yes, I understand that. But obviously, if you get caught up a mountain somewhere and it's raining, you, you know, it, it depends. I mean, it will take some water splashes, but water ingress any any sort of pressure or squirts um, you're out of luck and interestingly it's not dust proof it's dust resistant i presume that's because you've got the flap and i don't know it's just how they put it together so just bear that in mind also in that regards the drop rating on this is only one meter so one meter on a concrete or something they are steady that should be okay um i was very impressed with the body on this look it's done really well i've genuinely carried this with a lot of keys tools um cash in pockets i've put it in jeans pockets work pockets i've put it in work bags i've, I've purposefully smashed this around and the reason I, I wanted to smash this around because i thought well it's all very well having titanium here but what about this does this get scratched and really if i rub that off look nothing it looks brand new i was extremely impressed so i don't know whether there's a, min a mineral glass it doesn't sound like plastic um, normally if you do that with anything that, is, that is, isn't Corning Gorilla Glass or anything like that, you'll get little scratches. Not the case for this. You may notice, though, in fact, we'll zoom in there on the screen. You see on the left-hand side, that isn't a scratch. That's a hair. So when they've manufactured this, yes, it's past quality control, but can you see there's a hair behind the screen? So we'll zoom back out again. So that's a little bit irritating because I have carried this you know it was like that when i got it because i had a, a close scrutinize of that screen so that's a little bit of a shame but body wise it's great and um, the end reminds me of the tip se here's the tip se from uh, nightcore look very similar look slightly smaller but very similar setup it's two leds and on this one they are using two p8 osrams which gives you a little bit extra throw it i don't think it's in the range of the sst 20s and things like that but in regards to this versus like an xgp or a cree normal and um, you're going to get a little bit extra throw but to be honest this is more of a floody light and that is what a keychain light should do basically so like i say ip54 it's a one meter drop rating and you've got your two uh, LEDs in there so it's TAR so it's pretty floody I'll just show you there so if yeah once it once that equalizes there it, it's pretty floody you could, it's hard to see the hot spot there I'll show you some outdoor, outdoor shots eventually and side by sides and you'll see that this excels at close range and just pushing out towards medium uh, once you get past that it, it's rubbish at distance you know if you want more distance you're gonna have to go for something like these so the so fern i mean these are similar sizes um sc21 two this is the top nightcore top um, very bright a thousand lumens as as dictated by the screen there um but different setup look as you can see and we'll, we'll do the side by side don't worry but the, these are higher output um this is more for mid-range i would argue so because of its tiny diminutive size it is only a 280 milliamp hour battery in here very small but i think that's adequate because you've got to ask yourself okay would well, you want bigger yes yes you can get bigger i mean look at this you can get the tip two here but much bigger almost double the size but to be fair you do get the magnetic release there which i quite like i think that's a good feature and you've got this you can take off but um and brighter 720 lumens whereas this is 500 maximum on turbo so uh, one of the main features of this being a keychain light is its rechargeability so you've got your battery in which you can't you can't change you can't replace that um, and it's a usb rechargeable and um, one thing i want to note uh, note here is it's got a usb flap now it's a bit of a flimsy rubbishy one look watch so you flip you, you do that and then look there's no lip on it if i can get it to focus there there's you'll notice there's no lip on it to give it extra waterproof or anything like that it's just one dumb slab of rubber really um slightly pliable um, very poor um, and you've got this weak attachment point here but you know small small mercies it is type c 
Um, I do have a Type C because there was, wasn't one in the box. So here's a Type C. So this just happens to be a Type A. There's your traditional Type A and then Type C. So it's omnidirectional. You can put it in that way or that way. It doesn't really matter. So we'll, we'll test that. So we'll, we'll use this here. This just happens to be a power bank. So we'll get that in. And then we'll plug this in and you will notice that it will start charging. So the buttons will flash blue. There you see them flashing. Okay, so they will flash and also you get a battery indicator here. So can you see the battery? So you can see there it's 4.2 volts and the battery is charging. And you can see that by just turning that on. Now you'll notice it functions whilst it's charging. Another good feature. So you can be charging that and meanwhile still run that. Obviously you need to run it at a lower level and then that will catch up and charge this. Charging on this was you know, pretty decent. It was pretty rapid. Um, I mean, I can, at the minute, because this is nearly full, it's going to go at a pretty poor rate. So five volts and it is 0 0.1 of an amp. So pretty low there, but it's a small device. And when it's nearly full, it sort of slows down a bit anyway. And for those who want to know, is this power delivery? In other words, can you do type C to type C? So turn that off. I do have that cable. So here is a type C. So it's type C on both ends. So there has to be some level of negotiation between this and the light. So if this is power delivery compatible, it will charge. So let's have a look. So plug that in. See it flashing there? And you can see the battery animation going up, moving to the left. It does charge and it functions. So we can turn it on. See? So you can charge uh, power delivery, which is type C, type C. Excellent, great, good to see, because not all lights can do that. So nice to see, it's something less to worry about. Okay, so turn that off, get rid of that. Okay, so let's go over the UI. Now, one of the main things I like about this is the screen. So although it's small, it gives you a little bit of feedback. So it will tell you, the at the top there, it tells you the level, so level three, and you can Click through them, level four, you see on the top left, level one. And it's at the moment, it's, it's in daily mode. You have a daily mode and a demo mode, and I'll show you. So daily mode means you turn it on and it'll run. You switch it off and it won't. However, if you press both buttons together, it goes to demo mode. I, I guess demo mode is something of a, of a safety measure, so it doesn't burn for too long in your pocket. Also, as a retail unit, if this is in, it stops people holding it down for too long and running the battery out. So in other words, if I turn this on, it will only run for 30 seconds because it is in demo mode. But obviously, you can't change that by just holding down, going back to daily mode. Okay, so I like these little screens. It's an optical LED, sorry, OLED. So as I say, when it's turned on, you've got your levels on the top left there. Level 1, 2, 3, 4, and then back again. You also have a turbo mode, but we'll go over that. So what, what is this clock in the middle? So it's currently saying 60. It's trying to give you a representation of how long it's going to last in that mode. So we're on level one, which is one lumen. We'll tell you, if I turn it on, there, one lumens. So what it's saying there is it's saying you get 60 hours out of that. So if we go to the next mode, I do it by one, it might help. So at level, so 15 lumens, it's saying I should get eight hours out of that. Level three is 65 lumens there, see, and I will get two and a half hours out of that. And bear in mind, this isn't just a quick one-off. Here's some information. As that runs, that will tick down. So it'll go, right, two hours, 30, two hours, you know, it'll, it'll run down. So you can look at that at any point and go, wow, that's okay. I know exactly how long this is going to last in this given mode. So if we go to the next mode, it is the highest mode. So they're saying 45 minutes, 200 lumens. If at any point you do want turbo, which will take this up to 500, and I'll show you, I'm just going to hold the mode button. Uh, turbo mode, five. So what it's saying is it's saying, look, you're going to get 15 minutes. You will get 15 minutes if it doesn't step down. Now the step down on this isn't timed, it is temperature related. So I can't tell you how long that's going to last for you as an end user. It depends, if you live in the North Pole, it's going to last a hell of a lot longer in turbo than if you live in the Sahara Desert. So it is temperature based. So just bear that in mind. I didn't find it particularly excessive. It's only at 500 lumens, even though this is very small. I didn't find myself, you know, halfway up a ladder at 500 and then it flicking down and being annoying. But it will temperature step down. I think they call it ATR, automatic temperature regulation or something. So very impressive. Um, I did do some testing. So I'll put this down here. I did some testing because I thought, right, I want to know um, a little bit more about this light. So I tested the, I mean, he, here's my figures. Here's my figures here. Okay, so I did a lot of testing on flickering and things like that. So the CRI, in other words, the 
colour rendering index. How good is that? Well, I got 70%. It's about on par for a lot of crees. It's not brilliant, but it's not terrible. It's, it's adequate, I would call that. It's fine. Bear in mind, sunlight is 100%. Um, and the high end, you know, good colour rendering index and the cheers and things like that, you will get around 90, far, 90 plus, um, which looks much better. If you're a colour snob, you'll love that. If you're not, if it's just a keychain light and you don't sit around wondering about colour rendering index, you can ignore what I'm seeing here. But for those who do want to know that, it's about 70%, so it's okay. But obviously, there are better options, uh, which I'll show you in a moment, and you will get better colour rendering index. And in other words, you will get that. Uh, you will see more of the colour gamut coming back to the human eye there. In regards to its tint, it wasn't what I expected. I thought it was going to be about 6,400, 6,500, which would be like a very white light. Um, it wasn't. It was the tint I, I got was, I think it was about in Kelvin value, it was 5,500 or 5,497, I think, off the top of my head. So pretty good. Bear in mind, something like a 4,000 would be a warm light. So very like sunlight-ish and then uh, on a, a hot summer's day, but then more towards the neutral, neutrally is where this is. You know, it's above 5,000, but it's it's nice. I mean, you know, it's decent. Uh, I think they did a decent job. It's not super white, so you won't get tin snobs whinging, but those are the figures that I got. In regards to flicker, I didn't notice anything. Um, there was a, some slight modulation um, coming in there. Um, I noticed on my test, which is weird because they're claiming that this is a constant, a constant current circuit, I think. In other words, there is no pulse width modulation. I didn't see any in my test, and no matter what mode I put in or what conditions I was in when I was in near running water or, you know, it doesn't, didn't matter. I didn't see any flickering, which is great because I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of that. Okay, so get rid of that. Get rid of my figures there. Okay, so they did really good on that. So like I say, um, you know, it goes from ultra low all the way to turbo. So you've got ultra low, low, medium, high and turbo. Really good. You do have a, an E-lock function. So it's weird. You've got two locks. So the first lock is you press and hold power. And then you, did you see the padlock with one? It won't work, but mysteriously turbo will. If you hold it down so it's sort of a half lock i don't know what the point of that is i'd rather just a lock that worked which you can do so if you click and hold and let it go to i'll show you so you got i'll need to turn it off first right so from off click and hold so you've got padlock one padlock two so now it's padlock two you can't turn it on and click and hold won't work it will display the padlock it will not work which is great and then Click and hold to unlock. See the little key? It's unlocked. It's back to normal. Um, it works. It's okay. Um, it, it does the job. Let's put it like that. You need an E-lock on something like this, especially when it's crammed into pockets and it's going to get pushed like that and then turned on by accident and run the battery down. I think that's a necessity, so at least they've put that in. So really, let's go over some pros and cons. But before I do that, in fact, we'll put this down here. Let, let bring, let's bring up a picture here. Okay, so I went out and tested. These aren't all the lights I tested it with because at the end of this video, you'll see footage of extra lights like the K2 and things like that where I threw those into the mix as well and a Tiki, which isn't on here. So I've got more footage in this, but as a general reality, this is what I did. I took a photograph with all these different lights that I've tested with and I'm going to show you them in, in my hand in a, in a moment. Um, I tested it against the Rovi Von A21. You can see that's... It's weighted more as, towards its hot spot. Uh, more lumens, it's 700 lumens and a better color rendering index because it's using an Achia 219C, I think, off the top of my head. But as you can see, it's trying to get through there. It's great in the middle, but to the sides, not so good, is it? So it's better at medium to longer ranges, where it's probably not good up close. In other words, um, as a keychain light, the Tiny 2 would actually be better. I tested against the Lumatop FWA, which I think does a, a, a good job overall. You've got a little bit of peripheral to the side, lovely tint there, very natural. You can see the browns there and a little bit of throw as well. So that did okay. But again, um, you can't charge that USB and it's got one of those dodgy buttons. You know, I wasn't so keen. I then compared it against another larger light, which was the Sofern SE21. Great little light, very cheap, USB rechargeable. Yes, on that one. Uh, more traditional it's pretty good though you've got decent peripheral there and it's got quite a nice hotspot there so 
it's kind of like a combination, isn't it? Um, you've got the hot spot of the Rovi Vaughan, but then you've got a little bit of the side illumination that you get from the lumen top. So onto the keychain light. So we've got in the middle there on the left, a night court tip SE. So the tip SE is the one that showed you with the dual emitters. So you get around 700 lumens. It's bigger than the Tiny 2. Um, it does an okay job. It's quite a diffuse beam. It's got a little bit of weight into the middle there, but it's enough. Um, and it's quite bright when in person. Now compare that with the Tip V1, which is ancient. Um, I think that looks quite bright, even though it's less lumens, um, but there's a quick drop off. You, you, you mean, you, well, you can't see from that photograph that I took, but the drop off is rapid. If, on the far left of that, you can see it's starting to drop off, um, whereas it didn't on the Tip SC and the Tip 2. You can't see that because you're just seeing that one little window, but to my left and right, I could see loads, whereas I couldn't on the Tip. It's quite focused, it's got like a frosted optic, even though it's in the low 300s uh, range of lumens. A uh, nice metal body though. Um, the Tip 2, a lot more lumens than the Tip 1. Uh, and again, the drop off was a hell of a lot less than the Tip. You can't see in that picture, but to the left and the right, it was really good. Uh, but it's a dual emitter and it's 720 lumens on that one. So here's the interesting stuff. So bottom left, so you've got Nikkor Tiny V1. So that's on the left, that's the original one. In person, it was a much harsher, whiter light, um, tint wise. It uses one emitter, which is like a micro lens TIR, so very floody. I think that's pretty decent. It's about 370 lumens, if I remember rightly. Um, but compare that to the tiny V2, which we're looking at. I think I, you could, I think you could argue that there are improvements. Um, top left of each of those you can see that tree draping over is more noticeable in the tiny v2 because you're getting more lumens um, it's a double emitter and also you, again you can't see it so much on that one but the drop off was a lot less you will get nice peripheral which you'll see in the videos that i've shot so it is an improvement from version one and on top of that you're getting a nice little screen as anyway and more lumens so i think they've done a decent job tint wise they look almost identical tint wise don't they even though in person, I'll say from my from what I've seen, uh, the Tiny V1 is harsher white. Most people don't care about that, but if you're a tin snob, bear that in mind. Um, and then so far right, tip the Nikkor top. Um, again, it looks quite disappointing apart from the middle. Even though it's a thousand lumens, it's much bigger, better throw, but poor peripheral. I would argue that the peripheral on the Tiny V1 and Tiny V2 is better. You're seeing more, especially on the ground. Look at that. So I think the Tiny does an excellent job for its size. Okay, so we'll, we'll get rid of that photograph there. Okay, so that's gone. So let's look at these lights that I looked at. So here's the Tiny that we're looking at. And here's all the lights that I compared it against. Okay, so let's put them all together and then I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about them. Okay, so first up, Tiki. Only 300 lumens, so less. Remember, that's more on turbo. Um, but you do have the auxiliary modes. You know, you've got different modes and will, will you use that though? That's what you need to ask yourself. And 300 lumens might be more than enough in this form factor, but you're not getting the cool screen, which I think is pretty, pretty good. Um, although I will be honest, I mean, this is the glow in the dark one, but the one I carry on my keys is still going to this day. It's with me every day. I've charged it a hell of a lot of times and I've used it regularly. It's still going, no issues. So I have no issues with with the keychain lights from Nightcore and you know how long they're actually going to last a little bit cheaper well a lot cheaper actually you can get this for about 20 bucks now ish and uh, depending on what version you get anyway but there are a lot of competitors which do something very similar to that so there's your 300 lumen option this is 1400 lumens can't charge it i just threw this in because I, I, I was testing some other lights um, it's a tail clicker but you know and it's a triple emitter uh, but very nice tint on this but gets hot rapidly on turbo and charging you're going to have to go and find a charger on you because it's got a lithium ion in here which is the 14500 or whatever the hell they call it yeah the 14500 so a thousand milliamps there so a bigger cell but do you do you want something like this which you can't could you really class this as a keychain light i would say probably not but there's your option there it's from lumen top i also tested against the uh, a21 from uh, rovivon nice high cri light here and um, more a little bit around the same sort of price depending on where you get it i understand you can get seals and things like that nice color ending index on this more for throw Th those two there 
and this one are more for throw that's what i would say so about 700 lumens on this but if you get it in the cree it's a thousand so this is a thousand this is the nightcore top screen again so let's look at these screens so very similar the screens bigger on this which it's not the end of the world um they work very similar uh, but this has a much bigger tir you see that and you get a thousand lumens just on turbo there so there's a thousand i can feel the heat from that and um, but you may or may not see it on screen the update on that is poor so can you see at certain angles you can see the refresh of the led there i'll do it again there can you see it the rolling shutter is picking that up there so the refresh did, i mean in person it's not an issue you don't notice it it's not like you know a horrible led light on the ceiling or a, a cheap monitor where it's, it's flickering out the corner of your eye. I didn't notice that on either of these, but that's just something to bear in mind. So people will argue that's not a keychain light, even though it is. It does have a keychain attachment. It's probably too big, isn't it? It's like a tweener, and it's a thousand lumens, and it's more for throw. So that's that one there. There's your other option. Um, you can look at the more original ones here. Is I mean, this is the original Nightcore tip. Larger, obviously. Let's look at size. We'll put the bases together, much larger, single emitter, lot less lumens, 320 or something like that. Whereas this one, look, 500 lumens, just way ahead of it, streets ahead of it. But it does a decent job, and as you saw in those photographs, it was fine, but rapid drop off uh, to the sides, but very cheap. Uh, step up from that is the SE, so it's a double emitter now, but even though it looks very similar, look. There you go, so very, very similar. Got that big fat attachment point at the bottom. Um, 700 lumens on this, which is decent. And in person, it's very nice, actually. It's pretty decent. Uh, and as you'll see, side by side, it does a decent job. Here's another tiny, well, it, is it a keychain light? Probably not. It's a tiny ADC, but Type C, it's got Angeral and decent. Uh, you've got your cell in there, which I'll show you. There, there's a CR123 there. So, it, it does the job and you know so far they're pretty cheap but if you want a dedicated uh, keychain like this is probably not not where you want to be looking you, if you want something really small you want something like a tiki or in this range so with that in mind here's the original so let's get a good close look at that so original on the right here and this is the new so look what they've done there they've made it slightly bigger move the buttons around but you're getting a screen and it's double emitter you see how on the original it was a micro lensed tir and then it's a double there so interesting and then this on this one they've chosen to put the charging port on the bottom and on this one it just happens to be on the top so on this one it's it's micro usb if i remember rightly yeah micro usb so not as good and um, i would prefer to get this the type c because that is the future whether people like that or not um Nice wide attachment at the bottom there. Um, I mean, I think the rate that is 30 kilograms. You can pull on that there, because I think that torque screw actually goes through a post which attaches that. I did have a look at some of the schematics. So I've got trust that that's not going to come flying off. Um, and that was the original connector that they sent with this. But like I say, I bought one of these as a gift. It was going for years. Does a good job, look. I think that's pretty good. You, if you got that on your keychain, you wouldn't complain. That's decent. Very light in comparison. Although this is the t the titanium version, so you, it's it's strong and light. So again, this trumps it. And just having that screen, I think that's a massive thing. We can just look and instantly see a battery level. Brilliant. Okay, so a couple of others. Um, the tip two. There's the tip two. Pretty decent you've got this little scabbardy thing and then you've got your magnetic attachment here which i really liked you can just yank it off and use it and then it is 720 lumens slightly different setup and a solid aluminum body there so very bright very similar in output to the tip se but decent but bulky and heavy look in comparison if we line the tops up look at that massive and chunky in comparison and much heavier um, and as you can see, that, that that's glowing in the dark now. Um, that, that looks like it's taking on a bit of light. Um, so that, there's another option. If you do like glow in the dark stuff, you might want to go for the Tiki. You see it glowing there? So that's just an option. Um, and talking of glow in the dark, um, the K2, I think I was talking to Josie or whoever it was on Discord. Um, loads of secondary modes on this. It's got micro LEDs, this one, two, three there. Then you've got these three secondary modes. This is the K2, very underrated, high CRI, ramping UI look and dead cheap so 
bear this in mind, 300 lumens, sorry, 300 lumens-ish range, so very similar to the Night Court Tiki. Slightly bit more bulky, but that's not the end of the world. It's only slightly. The only thing I didn't like on this was the button. I wish they would redesign the button, just bring out a K2V2 or something. Um, but, you know, decent and Type-C. So it's got everything you want, apart from maybe it's a softer button. Uh, so if you don't want all of this, all of these gubbins, you could go for something like this and you'd be very happy. Well, I did test that and I'll show you some footage uh, side by side. Okay, so let's move all this out of the way. Let's get rid of that, right. Get that out of the way. Right, let's give this a mark out of 10. So when marking this, I really need to think, right, this is a keychain light and, I, and I'm gonna mark it as such. So pros, very small. In comparison, you could say, well, the smaller ones are smaller ones, or the tiki's this and the tiki's that. Yeah, I understand that, but to also have a screen, I think they've done an exceptional job. I think that this is really good. Very small, but still very capable. It works whilst charging. It's got a OLED, which I like. It's really good. It shows you how long you've got left, what lumen level it is, your battery level. So screen really good, uh, constant current circuit, in other words, no pulse width modulation. So I appreciate that. No nasty flickering, uh, ATR step, in other words, Temperature step down rather than time, so it'll only step down when it needs to. Type C charging, including power delivery. There's a lot. There's there's a lot to like. Um, I wish it was a little bit cheaper, but this is titanium, so that's pretty good. So cons, um, it's not IPX7 or 8, so it's not fully waterproof. So maybe if they could improve that, I'd be a bit happier. Uh, and the flim flimsy flap. Look, we'll open this up for you. Look, all they need to do is just add a lip to that which Sofern do and other companies, and it works a treat, you get a nice tight fit, that's flimsy, and that is gonna snap over time. I'll tell you that now, just from experience, that isn't gonna last, if that comes out and gets pushed in your pocket. So, uh, but I don't wanna believe at that point, because there's very few downsides and a lot of upsides. So it marks out a 10, I'm gonna give that a nine. It's super small, it's titanium, it's not overpriced, it's more expensive, but it's not massively overpriced. It works whilst charging, it's got that brilliant screen, no flicker, decent tint. It's you know, I prefer a warmer one, but at least it's not like this harsh white. Type C power delivery, it's got everything I need. I'm considering changing the ticket that I carry to this because I want something with a screen because I, I found that I'm not using these auxiliary modes i'm just not using them so what's the point in having a light with them after carrying it for years so i'm probably going to move to this uh, and i don't think i'll miss I, I like the tiki but i think I'll, I'll like this more more lumens screen really cool so nine out of ten i think they've done a, a really good job so enough of me waffling uh, well done nightcore done a good job and uh, we'll go out we'll do loads of side by sides and comparisons i've got loads of footage here to show you so without further ado Get watching it, right? Goodbye. Whew.